God bless you, my friends. This is Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, Sr., pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and I'm in somewhat of a melancholy mood. First of all, let me say hello, and I pray that you're having a great day, but I'll admit uh, that I'm just a little down. What's wrong, Brother Wooden, you might ask? Well, I think this may be, if my calculations are correct, we're coming to the close of Jesus Pride Month. I have been having a ball celebrating Jesus, fighting for the rainbow flag, identifying with my Lord and Savior, and just just glad to be a Christian. I'm, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm just, I just thank God that I know the truth. I thank God that we're walking in the truth of God's word. Thank God for the truth uh, that is revealed in the word of God, which is the word of truth. And I praise God for knowing Jesus Christ and for seeing the things that are going on. I mean, our society is in such a, a bad way that there are those who wanted, you know, we just celebrated Father's Day. And at the Woods household, Father's Day has always been a big deal. My wife, my children, my son-in-law, uh, my family, my church family. We work hard here to make sure Father's Day is a day that's greatly celebrated. And, uh, and we have a ball. And, uh, and, and we do the same with Mother's Day. But do you know that there are those who want to change of the traditional Mother's Day and Father's Day to Special Persons Day. I guess we need to change it because there are some couples uh, where there are two men and there's no mother there, so they can't call each other mom, I guess. So therefore, the rest of us should change and go along with that change. Or the same thing with Father's Day. And there is a, a, a same-sex couple, there's two ladies there, one pretending to be a dad. And the other, uh, I don't know what's going on with her. And the, so they want us to change these time-honored observances. Honoring moms and dads, the God of the Bible made them male and female. And to, to that point, all of the other religions in the world agrees with me. And so now uh, uh, a minority of people, a minority of people who are uh, uh, creating their own rules and creating their only God. You know what they remind me of? They remind me of people who say, you know, I'm, I'm not a religious person. I don't go to any church. I don't adhere to any set of rules, but I'm a spiritual person. I'm spiritual. <laughs> when I hear that, it, it, it just reminds me of what Paul said to the saints uh, in Athens. He said he saw on one of their inscriptions to the unknown God. There were so many gods in Athens, <laughs> so many false gods, till you were more likely to run into a false god than a human being on the street of Athens during Paul's lifetime. And what was funny about it is that the, the city was crowded like the city of New York, people everywhere, but they were outnumbered by all of those false gods. And just in case, just, just in case they had missed out on a God, they made up one and called him the unknown God. Well, that's what I think when I hear people say, I'm, I'm spiritual. I, I don't go to church. I don't pay tithe. I don't give offerings. I don't believe in organized religion. I don't uh, adhere to any set of rules. I'm just a spiritual person, and I get in touch with God, and, 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 and he knows me, and I know him, and we have our own thing going. You're walking in a spirit of deception, my friends. You can't, you can't, the God of the Bible this is what I love about him. He's not the God of our creation. Amen. We got to serve him. He's a God who comes with a set of rules, doctrine, dogma, do's, don'ts. And then we'll tell you that if you love your mother and father more than him, then you're not even worthy of him. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Christianity. So we're in a day where uh, because people are making up new couples, 
putting people together who shouldn't be. And they're asking the rest of us to fall for that. But uh, I didn't get a chance to speak to you last time. Of course, we talked about it last Sunday. But I, to all the dads that I didn't get a chance to say happy Father's Day, happy belated Father's Day to you. And that's to all of the uh, fathers whom God made. And uh, I pray that every man will strive to be a good dad. Be a good dad to your children. Be a good man. Teach them the way. Lead them by precept and example. And they'll do good to follow where you lead. Now, we're closing out Jesus Pride Day, and I'm bringing this to a conclusion. But a passage of scripture came to my mind that I wanted to share with you uh, today. And it's taken from uh, the book of Ezekiel. It's a passage of scripture that many uh, slick preachers use to try to make you think that what you thought was wrong with Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't the problem at all. Now, I'm telling you, some of these guys, it's amazing to me the nerve of them, and they think you're stupid. But they don't know that you're, they don't know uh, you're not stupid at all. You you have the Holy Spirit, you have the spirit of discernment, and you can read. So I was in a setting not long ago, and uh, a politician who was running for office, uh, this guy wasn't even a preacher, and I guess he decided that he was going to teach the preachers. I'm always amused when, when people try that, you know. You ought to stick to your own field. But listen to this. He said, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, homosexuality and lesbianism and stuff like that had nothing to do with the sin. That, that, that was not the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, it didn't have anything to do with homosexuality. Ezekiel tells us what the sin of uh, Sodom was. And I knew where he was going, you know. Uh, I could see him coming a mile away. And so he goes to Ezekiel chapter number 16 and he reads verse 49. Uh, and verse 49 of Ezekiel 16 says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. So he, he mentions the iniquity of Sodom. It says it was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. So the sin of Sodom wasn't homosexuality at all. It wasn't the angels trying to, uh, 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 the, the, the men of Sodom trying to rape the angels. It wasn't the men of Sodom threatening to rape Lot. It was none of that. It was that uh, they were lazy and they had pride and, and fullness of bread and uh, abundance of idleness and that they didn't help the poor. They didn't give to the poor. They didn't give back. That was the sin of Sodom. Hi, 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 hi. Glory to God. And they say that like they're saying something. And at the time that this guy was talking, the guy looked right at me. And, you know, I sat there and looked at him. And I just wondered, uh, Brother Gary, I just wondered if he was going to read verse 50. See, verse 50, if you're in Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 50. I've read verse 49, but verse 50 is a continuation. It says, and they were haughty, proud, and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I took away, uh, therefore, I took them away as I saw good. Now, why, why would you read verse 49 and try to uh, change uh, what's in the Bible and, and just leave out verse 50 altogether? See, these are the kind of tricks and things, my friends, that people are trying to pull to silence us. And I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't you sure have talked about that this week? Why they tried to claim this? You talked about this month where well, they tried to claim this month. They claimed it. The president declared it, uh, 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 put it, uh, let it fly in many of our embassies around the world. Oh, my, it was a wicked thing that they've done. And uh, and so me and others like me. And I'll tell you something. I've heard from saints all over the world from as far away as Holland uh, to as close as next door. 
thanking this preacher and others like me for just putting the truth out there and just saying what needs to be said. And we, we speak the truth in love, but speaking the truth in love doesn't necessarily mean we're mushy. You know, I'm not a mushy, mushy guy. You know, I say what God gives me to say. I say it in love, but I think that I also I want to preach with authority and with power, and with love. And so when you look at Genesis chapter 19, and you read all that took place, uh, how they wanted to rape those men, they said they wanted to know them, they wanted to get with them sexually. And then you're going to go over to Ezekiel, and just read, and read only, read only verse 49. Uh, That is what I call a cheap trick. That only works for the lazy. That only works when you're talking to a congregation of people who can't find the book of Genesis in the Bible. But for the rest of us who are, who are reading the scripture, who loves God's, God's word, and who believe that God's word is right, we know better. We read for ourselves. And one of the successes of this ministry is that I've always encouraged our, minister, our members And those who hear me to be like the people of Berea, they read the scripture. They they heard what Paul preached, but then they went home and searched the scripture to see if those things were so. Anything that I tell you, my friends, search the scriptures and see if I'm telling you the truth. If I quote and tell you about something that's going on in society, look it up. You will see that we've made up nothing. You don't have to when truth is on your side. Now, my friends, tonight we're going to have a powerful service here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. My uh, my wife and I uh, are excited about the move of God, the things that are taking place. And we have a special treat for you tonight uh, as that uh, I have been in Memphis, Tennessee uh, this week with uh, our presiding bishop, the presiding bishop, J. Drew Sheard. I've been blessed uh, to be a part of his, his cabinet, to, to just be a part of his administration. And I cannot, I cannot express what an honor it is to serve uh, with our leader. And uh, I am in his corner 100%. I am praying for his success, praying for the success of the church of God in Christ. I'm praying for our nation. I'm praying that we embrace the lifestyle that Jesus died for us to have, and that is the way of holiness. The Bible teaches that we're to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and the Word of God is going to go forth with power and authority. I love you with the love of the Lord, and uh, I'm excited because we're coming out tonight for Bible study. Yes, Bible study. We're going to study the word of the Lord together, and as you can see, uh, I got to retire my flag for a little while. It may come out again. I don't know. You never know with Brother Wooden, but one thing you do know, I possess the courage of my convictions, and I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believeth. And my friends, that includes you and me. God bless you. We're going to make it a great day.